Hi friends, I'm Janet Ingle, the 5 Minute Read Maker. If you are watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe please, or and uh, notify even maybe, and that way you will always know when I drop a new episode, and it will make it easier for other people to find my channel and to become better read makers and happier musicians, so everyone will win. Today, you know, I had gotten a few questions recently about large tip openings. What do we do with a read when the tip is just too big, when the opening is too large? Uh, do we squish it? Do we scrape it? How do we know what to do? And coincidentally, as I was working on reads this morning, um, I came up with a couple of really good examples, one that is much too large and one that is much too small, and I thought I would just spend a minute or two talking about those. Here's the thing. Reads are weird, right? Like they're all individual and I am not particularly um, diligent about checking uh, my diameters, checking, like looking at every piece of cane before I wind. And frankly, I don't even do most of my own winding right now. I outsource a lot of that. So there can be some systemic reasons that you may be struggling with big wide openings. It could be that you're using a diameter of cane that is too small for what you need. Um, and if you think about it this way, uh, the cane it comes in usually these diameter ranges 10 to 10.5 or 10.5 to 11 for oboe cane um, and within your half a pound or quarter pound you may have a range of sizes but basically they're going to fit within that range well if you've got a piece of cane that is an 11 millimeter diameter <clears throat> um, it's going to a curvature sort of like this right and it's going to curve around like so. But if you've got a reed with a 10 millimeter diameter, it's much smaller, so the curvature is much more tight. And the tendency then, when you actually wind on the reed and you you begin to scrape it, um, the tendency always for a reed is to try to spring back to the way it grew. So if you're using the 10 millimeter cane that's pretty small, the curvature of the bark is very tight. And no matter how much you scrape, it tends to want to like go back to that tight arc, which tends tends to mean then that you've got a really, really open read. And in contrast, the 11 millimeter diameter piece of cane has a much more gradual arc. And so it's going to tend to give you a read with more of an opening like this that is a little more flat across. And it matters where you live in the country, right? At extremely high altitude, you might need the smaller diameter to force the larger opening. If you live down at sea level or someplace very humid, you might need that uh, larger, flatter diameter to give you a more manageable opening. And it also depends on what you want in a reed, right? If no one wants a reed that is round like a sphere, but you could be a person who just wants a little more beef in your opening, wants a little bit more uh, space to blow air. And so that gets to be part of your choice too. I am not saying that it is the case with these two reeds that they're of dramatically different diameters, but they certainly do have dramatically different tip openings. Um, another thing that could be happening, but isn't in this case, is that your overlap could be peculiar. And I have a whole other video on the overlap. We, we know about it. But I guess the thing I want to point out is that sometimes, and it's bad when this happens, but sometimes you can end up with a read that, like, you can... Here's my correct overlap that you can see here. You can see that on the left-hand side, you can see the away blade peeking out just a little bit. You can't see anything on the right. And when you flip it over, Again, you can see just a little of that overlap on the little bit of the away blade on the left. And as a right-handed person winding, that is what I want. That is what I expect to see. Um, but it sometimes happens to the best of us that your overlap can get a little bit messed up. So instead of seeing the overlap only on the left side, I might be able to see that away blade on the left and on the right as though the cane is sort of cradled within a nest of itself. And when that happens, that is nearly always a fatal flaw. Um, it's <clears throat> It forces the cane to make a smiley face. Oh, how am I doing with my like hand examples? Um, 
to sort of do this kind of maneuver. And then that ends up being not just a big opening, but an erratic opening that is not helpful to anybody. And I guess, finally, my final thought, if you have consistently large tip openings, uh, you could look at the staple that you are using because the smaller and rounder, I think, now I have to think about that. The, for sure, the smaller the opening at the top of the staple, of the staple, the more the top of the reed is going to want to be open because the <clears throat> the tiny top of the staple is sort of a fulcrum point, and as you wind snugly there, it might tend to spread the top of the reed. So if you're having a very large tip opening problem, you might consider using a staple with a larger top opening. Okay, so if you're having a consistent problem with it, <clears throat> you may want to look at some of these systemic issues. But if you just happen to have two reeds from the same normal seeming batch that are doing vastly different things like these two are, That may be something you want to deal with separately. I'm going to leave this relatively closed one alone because this is how I want my reeds to be, frankly. It's a little tight, it's a little shut, and as I look at what <clears throat> I did to possibly cause that, I can see that I've scraped fairly far through the heart and the tip is very long still. So it's relatively like connected the tip into the heart. And I think that if I just separate these sections of the reed a little bit more, this is just a day one reed, one that I kind of flung together yesterday. Um, I think that will settle itself down. Once I clip, it will open up a little bit more. I'm not really going to worry about it. This one, though, is a monster. And I guess I would think about three things. Thing one, when I have a reed like this, the first thing I want to try, the least invasive thing, is just like squishing it with my fingers and seeing if I can tame it. And I'm going to do this only on a very well-soaked reed, and I'm going to do it um, gently at first. So I'm really just feeling for what the reed wants to do. And if it is feeling brittle, if it's acting like it's going to crack when I squish it, um, that is an immediate red flag for me, and I will scrape before I crack it, right? If it, if, Sometimes, in other words, <clears throat> this reed just might be so hard and so beefy and so there with so much wood on it that it is not able to be flattened out with a squish. And if that is the case, then I have to scrape first. But I do find that if I can squish it with my fingers, that's a less invasive trick than scraping it with a knife. Having done that, you can see that it's settled down a little bit, but that is still too big for me to work with or to play on. And I can tell that because when I try to beep it, I can barely get anything going. Um, also, the process of squishing it helps me really feel what is going on. And <clears throat> I would compare this with another uh, read of yours that you actually like in terms of where does it squish? I can feel just under my fingertips that the tip is pretty heavy, the heart feels pretty normal, and the back here is actually enormous. Like, it's really not giving me any squish at all. So what I'm doing here is I really am just comparing my day one read here, the structure of my day one read, to the structure of a more finished read. And, and this just doing this and looking at it is telling me places that I need to scrape. So this is a diagnostic tool as much as anything. I would say, in general, that the window, that the, like, as I look at this read, obviously, there's a ton of wood in the heart and on the sides of the heart, and the windows have not been taken down very much at all, except for right here. Um, this is my sloppy day one scrape. It's not, not my best work. But very often, I think that the spine of the read and the strength of the windows will hold a reed open. And so I'm going to <clears throat> start back there, which is not usually like me. I would usually go to the tip first. And as I scrape out those windows, I'm allowing my knife to cheat toward the center a little bit. It's always important in the windows area. 
It's really important that I protect the rail here because that's going to uh, give structure to my whole reed and keep it from leaking out the sides. But it's not so important, in my opinion, that I leave a strong spine, especially if this is already a reed that is wanting to hold itself too open. So just doing that work in the windows, I expect will change the way this reed feels quite a lot. Like now, the squeeze is a lot easier. I can feel that it, it's um, more open to being closed down, if that makes sense. And when I squeeze all the way up, like definitely there's still weight everywhere. But look at how much more manageable that opening is getting. It would be normal for me to do a little bit of a plaque test at this point, just sort of press down, and I can see how much wood there is in the inside the tip. So it's never the wrong idea to get a little bit more off the sides and corners of the tip, which is what I am doing here. And anticipating that this will also improve my opening. Look at that. It's coming so much better. So because I've gotten it to a really nice and purified sounding uh, B crow, I'm going to go ahead and clip, see if this is taming itself. That may have been too much clip, but look, it's much more manageable already. Even comparing to my very closed one, we've got a lot of similarity. And I guess the final section of the reed, the section I, I haven't scraped yet, is the heart. Normally in my own reed making, I, lead, I take the bark off of the sides of the heart. So let me just do that next. Um, it did not feel to me when I started as though the heart was the biggest problem here but it doesn't hurt to just clean it up. And now my opening still is pretty manageable. So there's a reed. As I worked on that, you saw me scrape all of the sections of the reed, right? And really, truly, I think the answer to the question of a reed that is too open is to compare it in structure to one of the uh, more reasonably opened, reasonably uh, tippy reeds in your case, and notice like where the structure is awry, if any, if, if any place. Um, the more finished the reed gets, the more the opening is going to re-manage itself. I would say that a very thin heart, like sometimes, and I've made many videos about this, like the short flat reed, the reed with too thin a heart, it is entirely possible to get yourself to a weirdly balanced place where the heart doesn't have enough structure to maintain the opening of the reed so the whole thing just gets bigger and wider and flatter and more open and that is not what I'm talking about here that was not the not the case with this particular reed but I do find that as I scrape a reed normally the opening settles down a day one reed like after I've scraped it once and put it to bed for the for my overnight and woken it back up the next day it's usually pretty open and I'll do some combination of gentle squeezing which is both uh, symptom relief and diagnostic um, and then I work the sections of the reed sort of in the order that they seem to require them in this the case of this reed it seemed like I really needed to get that opening managed which is why I worked first in the windows but 
the tip and the heart both also had an impact on that overall opening. I hope that this has been helpful. This is a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos on YouTube. You can subscribe if you wish. I hope you will. And if you need to reach me to order Reads or Cane, to order a copy of my book, The Happiest Musician, uh, or to reach out to me with a question I can answer in a future five minute read maker episode, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.